I think it's, it's, this is the 17th or 18th episode here in the series. I'm going to have to take a look back. I think it's the 17th, though, uh, episode in the series. And yikes, it, it, it's uh, it, it's been action-packed. And uh, we've definitely gone through a lot of things. And like I said, guys, if you send an email to me or if you send me a question on Twitter or if you go in the live chat room at Ocelli.com, your questions, your inquiries, your commentary even, I will add it into the show, present it to Jordan, and, uh, you know, I can't guarantee you any sort of results as to how it'll go, but I can guarantee you that if it's a relevant question, it'll be added into the show. And I think this is a fair enough concept that we've gone forward with for the most part here. Um, anyway, Jordan, what, what are your thoughts on the direction we should begin with while I try to gather up some of these questions? Because, uh, of course, Windows made me reboot right before I go live to air. So I had to uh, scramble to pull things together. And uh, now I got to yeah, try well, and pull up the emails. I, I have to do the same thing. I have to scramble on every show because I always have to reboot to make sure my uh, Skype is working correctly, etc. And I think it's probably just as well we <clears throat> start on one corner and work out and see where it goes because there's so much to talk about in relation to the kind of information I deal with. I've always been interested in mysteries and, and uh, history itself is a mystery without understanding how history works, where you know, secret societies and fraternal orders are working all around us. I just saw today that there was a bombing in, in France. I don't know if it was today or yesterday or what, but it's a bombing in France. Uh, it's obviously the work of a group. And so that's the point I'm making when I talk about secret society. There are different groups. We know that they were, we call them organized crime. Syndicates, uh, secret societies are dealing with organized crime. We are also, you know, we have all kinds of fraternal orders operating around the world. But the one thing that most people don't appreciate is how our world is being run for us by secret people. People who we don't even know exist. We don't know who they are. And we'll never hear their names. The people who really run this planet, you will never, ever hear their names. You will never see a picture of them. So all the people that we do see in the so-called Illuminati you know, world of, of the masters who run this planet, these are all middle class people. They're not, they're not the real bosses. The real bosses you will never see or hear from or know their name or anything else, because they don't need you knowing anything about them. They are in control, they make the decisions, and that's the name of the tomb. So that's why I've been very interested all my life in who really is running the planet Earth, who really owns us, and where does all this stuff come from, our religions, our military, industrial operations around the world. Uh, it's just an incredible story of secret people running our world for us. And we don't care because we don't do anything about it. And of course, as, as obvious, there's not much we could do about it, even if we did know. So uh, there's more poor and working class poor people on the earth than there is the elites. And if the poor people were to stay together and stand together, Instead of trying to destroy each other, if we stood together, we would be a profoundly important force for good and for and for exposing what's going on. And so there's a lot of good people like yourself who are trying to help others to wake the world up to what's really going on. That's, so that's what we're doing here. We're just trying to keep you awake and wake, awaken you to the fact that the world is not what you think it is. No, nothing operates the way you think it does. Well, and you know, so that's let me, what I've been trying to do. Oh, I know it. And let me interrupt you with something here, because th th this is a fascinating thing that keeps coming. Um, hang on just a second here. <laughs> let me adjust the microphone because it's giving me a little trouble. Uh, the, the issue comes up all the time. Uh, a lot of people say, well, listen, 
you guys talk about these things and, and you and you lay them out. And then when you, you talk about what it is we can do about it, uh, it seems pretty hopeless. We're all doomed anyway. Uh, why bother if we're all doomed? Now, here, here's the interesting kind of conversation I started to get into. And I want to know if, if, if you uh, uh, feel the same way that I do, that this is the, the, the best understanding that I can possibly put forward about it. And, and, and it is it is this. And also, I have a, a key question I, I just dug up here, which somebody sent me some weeks ago uh, related to Hiram, Hiram Abiff, by the way, and uh, a few things connected to that. But before I get there, overall philosophy, um, where, whereas, you know, listen, if there's nothing we can do about any of this, then why talk about it? Um, here, here's the reality of the situation, Jordan, and, and I want to see if, if you agree with what it is that I see. At any moment, in truth, um, th- there is a huge difference between what can be done and what will feasibly be done on the planet. For instance, there's actually absolutely no reason for anyone on this planet to suffer for lack of food, shelter, clothing, any resource. That's just broad strokes reality. Now, the circumstances that have been created, the systems that have been put into place, the individuals who wish to control scarcity, now, they they may have all sorts of ideas about how this cannot be done, but the truth is that even, you know, those who scream about overpopulation and how there's way too many people on the planet and everything else, and I believe that they have been sort of programmed to feed into an agenda to help out with the idea that it's a good thing when so many people die off and suffer. The reality is it's not necessary. There is enough for everyone on this planet right now to not be hungry, to not be homeless, to not be without resource. It's just that simple. Now, does that mean that the circumstance is going to emerge tomorrow? Does that mean that effectively we could see, well, theoretically, yes. (laughs) Theoretically, if we could all make an agreement to stop killing each other, if we could all theoretically make an agreement that distribution among everyone to be equal and all that kind of, that could happen. Now I know some people are out there going, Oh, you sound like a socialist communist, whatever ism, ism, ism. <clears throat> I'm not talking about isms. I'm not talking about anything other than hard facts. There's no reason that this could not be done except for these systems and these other isms, which have been put into place. Now, does that mean it's going to happen? No. But could it be done? Yes. So here's the truth about what it is we can do about this system that is in place here. I do believe that if en masse, all of us, you know, the the rest of us, not the middle managers (laughs) and not the elites, obviously, but if all the rest of us collectively turned our force into one particular direction and decided that we were going to abandon the system as it stands, and decided that we were going to cooperate and do some of those things I was just talking about, all of this would become meaningless overnight. Could that happen is another question entirely. But is it something that theoretically could be done if you could? Yes, it is, isn't it? So it's kind of a hard place to be in when you see something that can be done. But is it likely? Is it really truly possible in the world in which we live well that's another story is that one of those struggles you kind of have internally every now and then where you got to say well listen i know that we can change all this overnight but will it get done can it really you know feasibly realistically get done is that something that you go through as well yes yes i have been concerned with that all my life because I know that there are things we could do as humans, because we're all very, very powerful. Uh, even the scriptures showed that. Even God saw that it was in the in the Bible. It says that man that says God looked down from heaven upon the earth and saw that the thoughts of men are bad all the time. But that uh, at the time when they were building the Tower of Babel, God said, "If you leave mankind alone, there's nothing he can't do." And, you know, he can do whatever he wants to do. So you divide the language so that you know, he can't do what he wanted to do. You divide the language at the time of the, of the building of the Tower of Babel because whatever it is that mankind 
collectively decides they want to do, they can do. And uh, we've decided a long time ago, we want to go into space. Well, now we're in space. We're out there doing things that we are not even told. The people are not even being told what we are capable of doing and are doing right now in space. And so I think, yes, we could change the world. But the last time we actually had a legitimate a legitimate way to actually change the direction of the human family was back in 1770s when the founding of the United States of America. Uh, it was um, Thomas Paine, the guy who actually came up with the idea and promoted the idea of an American revolution and come up with the idea of signing a Declaration of Independence and a Constitution. It was Thomas Paine who actually was the, the brain behind what we call the Great Awakening of the American Revolution to found the United States of America on the basis of law and reason and logic and intelligence. And, uh, and he said, Thomas Paine wrote, that we now, in 1776, with the founding of the United States of America, he said, we now have the opportunity to completely restart the whole world over again. Because they realized that uh, setting up a country that was based on the freedom of the individual and protecting of individual rights of individual people that the freedom of mankind would explode all over the earth and it would change the whole destiny of the human race if we were allowed to be free. But this is precisely what the European royalty did not want. They're not interested in their slaves being free. And, and so that's why, that's why Martin Luther King, was one of his famous quotes was that, Slaves have never gone to their masters and, and asked for freedom. They don't do that. The only way you get freedom is you take it. You, you demand it. You demand your freedom. And you do something about it. And that's what happened in 1776. A lot of people decided they'd had enough of European royalty with kings and queens riding around in golden chariots and flipping their cigarette butts on you and your children. And uh, so they've decided they've had enough. Uh, and that's what, what you know. Thomas Paine said. We have in, in our hands now the opportunity to start the whole world all over again because they believed that there was a God who was divinely orchestrating the founding of the United States of America on the basis of human dignity and freedom. And it would have worked. It was on its way to working. People were flocking to this country from all over the world at the founding of this country. People were coming here and, and spending whatever they could, whatever they had to get here, to be a part of the great American experiment. But the only problem was is that the laws did not stick. What the founding fathers said they wanted and didn't want uh, the the enemies of this country got around it. They went around the founding fathers. And therefore, the same tyranny and the same criminal elements that were running all over Europe, uh, you know, and the criminality of Europe, and the, uh, and the elites who were running the show in Europe actually came to America. And the secret societies and the religious orders of Europe, they came to America knowing that you cannot let these people found their own country on freedom and liberty and do their own thing. Because they're going to affect Europe, it's going to affect the whole world, and it's most likely going to affect all the royalty of the world. Royalty is, royalty is above the world. And if you let the common working class people decide that they want to be free, you're going to have a serious problem between the millions and millions of working class people against the handful of the royal people who don't have to work. They let you work for them. And so the royalty of Europe realized that if you let these Americans do what they're doing, there's going to be trouble galore. You're going to have more problems than you can even imagine 
for the elites. So you cannot let these people do what they're talking about doing. You've got to stop them in their tracks. Well, as it turns out, the same people that were destroying the peoples and the human race of Europe and the rest of the world came here to America and got themselves set up and they came over with money and power, political power and money, and moved into our little experiment we call America. And they started buying into our system and collectively buying into our, wor our world that we were building. And today, they today now run America. So we did not, we didn't follow through. We knew who our enemies were. We fought them to even found this country, but I'll be damned if they didn't come in later, quietly, they moved in, and they've destroyed our country, they've destroyed our people, they've destroyed our future, they've destroyed everything. And the reason why is because they were the royalty, and they didn't want America to be alive. They didn't want the American people to do what they were almost ready to do, and that is to take over the world for freedom and liberty and justice. And so <clears throat> the founding fathers, whether we don't, most people don't know this, but the founding fathers of this country realized who the real, legitimate, bottom line enemies of America and human dignity and freedom are. And they said they would not allow this was in the original founding of, of America. <clears throat> the, there, were, there were two groups that the founding fathers did not want in this country. <clears throat> if you go back and look at the history of America, you will see there were two very large and powerful organizations that the founding fathers did not want to have anything to do with, and they did not want them in this country, and you couldn't have them in this country. And that was the Catholic Church. The Vatican was the single biggest enemy of freedom, dignity, and honor the world has ever known. It was a Roman system, a dirty and fascist Roman system of totalitarianism and fascism and, and slavery in Europe. <clears throat> it was the brains behind the wars, revolutions, the violence, the bloodshed of the world. The Vatican. The Vatican was the biggest criminal organization on the earth, and the founding fathers of America realized that, and they said that Catholic Church will not be allowed in this country, period. They want nothing to do with it. People can have their own religion, fine, but the Catholic Church as an organization cannot operate on American property, on American land. They did not want the Vatican having anything to do with this country. Why? Because they knew the Vatican is run by a man we call the Holy Father. And he represents, why is he holy? Because he represents the God. So he's a Godfather. You understand what the terms mean. And so we, we allowed the Catholic Church to come into America a long time ago and with it came the Mafia, La Cusa Nostra, all the underworld organizations, which are all coming from the Catholic religion and the, and Southern and South, uh, South America, Central America. And when America was being founded back East with New England and, uh, and, and of course when Rome moved into Britannia, the Roman Empire moved into Britannia or the UK, the center of operation for Rome in England was York, England. York, England was the city where Rome officially uh, run the United Kingdom. So Rome actually was dominating the United Kingdom, the UK. And, and the city where Rome operated from was called York, England. And so today we have something called New York. New York is the empire state. It represents the Roman Empire. It's the empire state in New York. The dirtiest, filthiest, political, underworld organization of, of organized crime the world has ever known. It is out of New York that the Communist Party has come. It's where the drug running and the drugging of, of Western civilization goes through New York. 
the international banking cartels, all of the pagan, filthy, and dirty religions coming out of the Roman Empire, the whole entire complex that we call the United States government today is a Roman fascist Jesuit system of tyranny. And people do not know, they have no idea in the world what is going on in religion on the earth today. All we know is that we just do what we're told to do because when we're born, we're born into a system and we grew up in a system. We never questioned anything. We didn't know anything. And it's just as well we didn't question anything because the adults around us didn't know anything. So nobody can tell you. And the very few people who were wise and well intelligent, intelligent and wise and well informed who did know, they will be killed off slowly but surely. They will be thrown into prisons and killed off by the conspirators who are trying to overthrow our great country. And this is what's going on today. New York is the center for all of the filthiest, dirtiest stuff going on on the earth today. It's the empire state, the Roman empire. And today the empire state is now in decline, just like the Roman empire was in the fifth century. We are now as America in decline. We've lost our freedoms. We've lost our, our basis for operation. We've lost our industrial. We've lost intelligence. We've lost everything. We've just lost virtually everything that we built up and had going for us at the founding of this country. We've lost it all because the people who are trying to destroy our country are the Jesuit Roman Catholic system in America. You need to wake up and find out who your enemies really are. The Pope wears a Pope's mitre, that strange headdress the Pope wears. It represents a, a god named Dagon, D-A-G-O-N. Dagon was a Phoenician, Canaanite, old ancient god from the, from the ancient world four or five thousand years ago. Has nothing to do with Jesus, has nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. The Vatican does not represent Christianity or Jesus. It represents Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Our governmental systems, our corrupt society, our corrupt laws, drug addiction, alcoholism, murder, violence, wars, all of the corruption of the human race is now centered in New York, the Empire State. Therefore, we now have the United Nations, a conspiratorial apparatus to destroy individual countries and peoples all over the world. The United Nations, the country itself is dying because of the UN. It's an incredible story about betrayal and how we got into the mess we were in. And I don't think there's any hope for us to get out of it because the people love the holiness of the, of the church. They love to go to church and worship the Lord. And, and they think that they're doing something wonderful and holy. And it makes them feel well. It makes them feel good. Never realizing for a moment what the church really is. Where it really came from and how it grew out of the Roman Empire. And today, Washington, D.C., is in fact the center for the new Roman Empire. And the brains and the money and the, and the organization comes out of New York, the Empire State. My God, what a story there is to tell and people would wake up, but they're not going to wake up because they would much rather have their, their religions and their holiness. Like the Bible says, you have chosen for yourselves your teachers. People are not interested in what God is doing and the universe. They're interested in what their teachers tell them. So they go to, and you can't even be a minister in America unless you go to a college and get a degree from the government. It has to come out of New York and Washington, D.C. to get a degree before you can be a minister. So they have Christian universities. All I'm saying is that you need to wake up to who your enemies really are. Your enemy is a religion 
that you practice today in the world today is referred to as Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. All three are religions of an ancient pagan world. And this is what happened in the ancient world is happening today. The more we change, the more we stay the same. We're still killing each other over religion because that's what religion is. It is a murderous, death-dealing place on the earth that is destroying the individual and destroying countries. We need to wake up and find out who is really behind the elites. And who do the elites we, you know, we talk about the Rothschilds. Well, the actual history of the Rothschild banking family is that they were the bankers for the Vatican. They were handling the Vatican's money. So when you talk about how wealthy and rich the, the Rothschilds were, they were wealthy and rich because they made money off the Vatican. The Vatican was running the whole entire Roman Empire since Caesar fell in the 5th century A.D., the Vatican has for 1,600 years dominated Europe. And for 1,600 years, Europe has dominated the world. All roads lead back to Rome. The Catholic Church is, in point of fact, the outward sign of a very powerful ancient secret society that founded Rome and has, and has been officially destroying our country and our freedoms and everything that we've worked for in this country. And the people love it. The people think it's so holy, they crawl on their knees to the Pope, never realizing he represents God. And he's the Holy Father. He's a Godfather. You've got to wake up and find out who your enemies really are. Well, absolutely. And, you know, Jordan, what's, what's fascinating to me is that you brought up the Roman Empire several times there, right? And it, some people have a very superficial view of what the Roman Empire actually was, right? Yeah. And it's it, it's amazing to me because it, it is something that stretched over centuries and went through various sort of incarnations, That's right? right. Um, and and because I've studied Roman history extensively. Uh, and I'm not I'm not saying I'm an expert on Roman history, but I went through it enough to understand that at one point it seemed as though there was a, a society which was not based on the ruling classes doing exactly what they were doing. But that changed and they, they borrowed from the Greeks. And obviously there there is a Greek element to this as well, which is never really discussed all that often when it comes to the Roman Empire. Just, you know, well, stylistically, it was similar uh, no, there, there's something else going on there. Uh, That's right. It, it, and there's a legendary sort of uh, mythos connected to the, the formation of the nation state of Rome. Uh, you know, the, it, just like a lot of other nation states on the planet, apparently, huh? Um, yeah. You know, it, it's really interesting. But, but that took hundreds of years, hundreds and hundreds. I mean, you know, the span of the Roman Empire, how far is it? It's... Well, what, uh, seven, eight hundred years easily that, uh, that the Roman Empire stood, depending on which form it was in. Of course, during its decline, it was completely divided. You had, you know, corruption had entirely eaten even the, the, the superstructure of the elitist classes running things. Uh, you know, e even that was in, everything was in a downward spiral by the time we had the Eastern and Western empires, right? right. Um, various reformations. We've seen that happen to what we call the United States, but it's only been 200 and, you know, less than 50 years, right? It's it's almost a, like, say, one third or maybe even a quarter of the time of, of the, the, the Roman Empire's existence that the United States has gone from this mythical formation. And, and I'm not even stating that the, the history because here, here's the problem with Roman history. It's very difficult to unpack because I think they've hidden a lot of it. It seems as though uh, unless you're culturally connected to certain things, you don't have a lot of insights as to what went on. It's okay. been uh, it's been glorified unnecessarily in some ways. It's been sanitized. Oh, gee, wait a minute. You know, same thing has happened to American history. So it's very difficult to really follow what happened here. When you're talking about a secret society that pre-existed the Roman Empire, it's not as though it was founded because of the Vatican. 
A lot of people think that, that the Roman Empire was founded, you know, in order to bolster the Vatican. The, the Vatican, the Roman Empire, these are merely symptoms of something that existed previous. That's right. And I don't know really what the ultimate root is. Now, there's a legendary sort of route to some of the secret societies that was brought up here. And uh, actually, two different guys named William <laughs> uh, sent in questions related to this. And I want to get to it right now because I think it's going to be appropriate and it's going to link together perfectly with what you're talking about. Um, and, and they want to know about Hiram Abiff. <laughs> um, let's see. I was wondering if you knew about. All right. Let's see here. Uh, the architect killed by three ruffians. Okay, this is a Masonic. Um, yeah, legend, well, Freemasonry right? came out of the Vatican. Freemasonry was born, nurtured, and and raised in the Vatican by the Knights Templars, the Knights of the Temple of Solomon. They have the Knights of the Temple of Solomon have dominated the whole human race. And so what we call the Vatican is actually an ancient secret society that came out of the ancient world. And today, America is the Roman Empire. And like the Roman Empire, we are now in decline and we're now falling. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's just an incredible story of betrayal of the human family and betrayal of the Americans who died trying to keep us free and the people who served in the military to protect this country are now in the military to protect the elites and the Roman Empire. They're not doing anything. The, uh, the military in America are not allowed to do anything to protect the American people. They are bought and paid for by the government that runs the world. They run the earth out of New York, the international banking cartels. And boy, when you start getting into the history of a world that we live in and where the wars have come from and who finances them and, and what the military today is doing in America, they're not doing anything to protect the American people. The military in this country is a disgrace because they have been taken over by our enemies. Our enemies run our country. Our enemies are not at the door. They run the country. And today, you know, the military is not doing anything to protect America. I mean, even when the president wants to send the military to do something to protect our borders, the whole democratic process rant and rave. They want to kill, him, kill the president, get rid of him. They don't want this country protected. The military is doing what they're told to do because they're bought and paid for. And they, and this is why I, I, I'm just amazed at what we call the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff. Who are these guys we call the Joint Chiefs of Staff? The heads of the Army, the head of the Navy, the head of the Marines, the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. They are the military head in this country. And what have they done to defend our republic? Zero, nothing. They're on the take. They're a scummy group. As far as I'm concerned, the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff represents treason in America. Where are the troops to protect the American people from the enemies of America? They just, they just wine and dine themselves and get their stars and little brownie points and wear their little badges and do zero nothing to protect the American people from the enemies of this country. And it's extraordinarily incredible that the people today in America do not see that the military is out all over the world for the elites who run this operation. We call America, the, and the military is out all over the world doing the will of the elites who run this country. From behind the scenes, the secret societies have the power to to control the military industrial complex. Right, and, and this is why when you ask yourself, the, well, well, this is why when people ask themselves, I, it doesn't make any sense that the military is doing this. Well, th that's because you're still thinking that the military is there to serve and protect you. 
that's what your problem is. Uh, because otherwise, if you if you stop thinking of it that way, you might it might make a whole lot more sense as to why we're going into certain nations and doing certain things. Um, and and here's here's the thing about that beyond the military though, and and one could again you can draw corollaries throughout the uh, the the rise and fall of the Roman Empire to exactly what Jordan's talking about. I think that would be an interesting discussion one day to have the. Uh, you know the the comparative timeline between the United States and uh, and and Rome, as it were, yep. and uh, you know, hey, look, uh, century one to century three, okay, that really represents the first uh, fifty years of uh, you know of, yep. of uh, America's existence. This kind of thing. I'm not saying that that's a direct correlation. I'm saying that as an example, that would probably be almost right. Um, but uh, what's interesting here is that uh, th- that's all true. But I want to get to this because this is a multifaceted question here, and it links again uh, to, to the fact that you're talking about the Knights Templar and, you know, which, which were the uh, the guys, the red shields, if you if, so to speak, uh, the, uh, the the red cross, which we still see today on the white background. Uh, those guys. OK, well. <laughs> Here's the thing. They, they want to know if Freemasonry actually comes from a Christian uh, uh, facility. And as you just stated, it comes from the Vatican. So there's that. Um, let's see. Also, uh, on a side note, they're asking about uh, certain things that they've read in esoteric volumes that uh, have occasionally leaked out of the, uh, the, the you know, Freemason book collections, if you will. Now, I've seen one of these Bibles, uh, Jordan. I've only seen one in one person's possession in my lifetime, but a uh, fascinating thing. Have you ever seen a Freemason Bible? Oh, yeah, I've got one. Yep. Okay, so you know you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it, it is it is nothing like the Bible you find in your church, uh, just no. so you know. Uh, wholly different uh, illustrations and style to it, Jordan, wouldn't you say? Um, yes. But, they, they ask about Hiram Abib, the connection to that, the connection to the, uh, you know, to what is encoded in the Bible uh, of the uh, of the Freemasons about him. Is he just a, a, another figure very much like the Moses figure um, who they're also asking, is, is that character uh, more of an Islamic figure than a whatever? I, I think that you, you, you have exhaustively gone through that in the past. Uh, on this show, but if you'd like to address it again, uh, but but what of, what of the figure of Hiram Abiff? Do you figure that that is uh, yet again another made up sort of character? No, of course it's just a made up uh, myth. It's just a made up story, just like all the great stories of religion today are all just uh, as I've said before. They are stories. They are metaphors. They are symbolic metaphors, symbolic stories that are trying to tell you something. They're telling you something in secret. And so all the stories in the Bible, I believe, are metaphors. And and I've said this before. I'll say it again. And you can think what you want. I don't care what you think. It doesn't matter what you think. What matters is what is the actual history of the religious belief systems in America and in the world today. When you do some do some serious, intellectually uh, honest research, you will find that 99% of all the stories in religions are nothing more than made-up metaphors. Mankind has come up with their own stories, and they put in these stories all kinds of, of so-called history, which never happened, and, and today we are living by these same metaphors and symbolic stories that never happened. Today we have Jews all over Jerusalem and all over Israel going to what they call the Wailing Wall. And they are there at the, at the Holy of Holies. The most holy place in all of Jerusalem is the Wailing Wall. Why? Because it's the wall of King Solomon. It's King Solomon's temple. Well, first of all, there was no King Solomon. And second of all, the wall that we call the Wailing Wall is a Roman fort. The Romans built that wall. It was part of a Roman fort called Fort Antonia. Go do some research and you'll find the Wailing Wall does not have anything at all 
to do with Judaism or Jews, period. That's why today the Jews are crying and calling out to God and praying and putting their prayers on the wall, never realizing it's a Roman wall, it's a Roman fort. Go back to your encyclopedia and do something really strange. Read a book about Fort Antonia. Fort Anthony, Fort Antonia is a wailing wall of a, of a Roman fort that has nothing to do with Judaism at all. And this is why, precisely why, the Jewish world is crawling on their knees to the wailing wall and crying out to God at the wailing wall and nothing but worse, nothing but bloodshed and war and violence. The more people pray, the worse our situation begins to grow. The worse we're getting every day with wars and drugs and, and conflicts all over the world because the human race cannot wake itself up to realize that the religious institutions that we humans have put together are based on ancient prehistoric and ancient uh, symbols and words and terms that have been given to us by the secret societies who have founded the Roman Empire. They've founded the Roman Church. They have founded Judaism. They have founded these secret societies, have actually founded the, uh, the uh, Islamic world. The whole story of, of uh, Muhammad and the Islamic religion is nothing more than a very ancient, old, pagan religion going back thousands of years before Muhammad and Islam ever existed. It's been known by people who teach these subjects in universities and colleges, but the people out on the street, they don't know. They've never been told. There was no King Solomon, so you couldn't have King Solomon's temple if there was no King Solomon. It never existed. Well, there right. was no King David. There was no King David. And best part is that there was never, ever an ancient Israel. So when you hear uh, preachers and ignorant preachers talking about this and that happened in ancient Israel and the ancient Israel did this and that and the Lord did this with the ancient Israelites, there was, in fact, historically speaking, no ancient Israel ever existed. Period. End of sentence. And you need to wake up and find out that you have bought into a story that was not true, just as all the other religions have given you stories that are not true. You have something we call Christmas for, for Christianity, and we have churches and houses at Christmas who put Christmas lights on the trees and Christmas lights on the houses. But then the Jews also have a, a, a celebration at the same identical time at the winter solstice. They call it the Festival of Lights, the Festival of, all, uh, the Festival of Lights for Jews. Well, isn't it interesting that the Festival of Lights is precisely what Christians do? They light up Christmas trees. They light up their houses. They light up their homes. They light up their businesses. It's a Festival of Lights. It has nothing to do with the Jewish religion. The Festival of Lights in Judaism is nothing but an ancient pagan celebration of the sun coming back and the sun dying in, in the winter in the south, going down to the southern hemisphere. The sun dies in the southern hemisphere, and then, it's, and then when it comes back to life in December 25th is when it moves one, one degree northward, they celebrate the sun is now born again. And therefore, there's a story about a man they call Jesus. He was referred to as God's son. S-U-N, not S-O-N. God's son, though so he was, a, uh, he, he is the light of the world. Well, of course, the S-U-N is the light of the world. Christianity is the worship of the sun. And the Jewish religion is a, is a potluck dinner. The whole of Judaism is a collection of all of the old ancient cults of the ancient prehistoric world, all rolled into one neat religion. It's called Judaism. It's actually the worship of the sun. It's actually the worship of the moon. It's the worship of the stars. 
It's the worship of uh, Saturn. It's the worship of, it's, it's filled with all kinds of ancient pagan religions, all molded into one called Judaism. And we, and we look at Judaism as a, something very important as the, as the actual basis for our religion and Christianity it goes back to the ancient Israel. Ancient Israel never existed. There was no King Solomon. There was no King David. One of the oldest Bibles I had many years ago, I can't remember the name of the Bible, but in this old translation of the Bible, it, everywhere in the Old Testament that it spoke about King David, it didn't say King David in this old translation. It said King Druid, not D-A-V-I-D, D-R-U, Druid, King Druid, not David, D-A-V, it was a Druvidian. Druvidian goes back to the worship of the sun and sun worship and the worship of the gods in India. Drudia, Drudidian, Druvidian, not David. And so Judaism and Christianity and Islam are all three based on Hindu. So if you want to worship the original God, go back to the Hindu temples and worship there. Because that's what you're doing if you're a Jew or a Christian today. You're worshiping an old ancient Hindu concept of the powers of the universe. It's extraordinarily stuff that's been hidden for years. And it is now, I believe, an idea whose time has come to tell the people the truth. There well, is not any value in Judaism, Christianity, or Islam. They're all three based on Hinduism, and they're all three nothing more than the religion of a book. All three require a book, the Old Testament, or the New Testament for Christianity, or the book of Islam for Islam. So it's all three called the people of the book. They need to have a book to base their religion on, a book, if you can believe it. And they burn, and you, and they are now having wars all over the world with bloodshed. The whole of mankind is crawling around on their knees in the dark, killing each other, dying of ignorance and ill-informed stupidity because of a book. The Jews have a book, and the uh, and the Christians have a book, and Islam has a book. They're called the people of the book. Uh, you just need to do some homework. You need to go onto the web and look up ancient pagan religions and find all the things that you believe in your religion today came out of India, came out of Egypt, came out of the Middle East. Uh, what, what a story. It's about time that people wake up. I've been trying to tell people what's going on on this earth, and I've tried to do it tactfully. I've tried to do it without hurting people's feelings. Or, or, you know, are causing them any hurt by telling them the truth. But I'm telling you, there's nothing left now. We've, we've just sold our souls to the devil. We've sold our souls. We've sold our country out. We've sold our children out. We've sold our morals and ethics. We've been sold out a long time ago. And the only hope for the human race is that we wake up and say no more of this crap. No more of this old ancient bull. I mean, right. you know, the Jews have the, the in, the in the Old Testament that they were worshiping of the golden calf, the golden calf, the golden bull. Well, if you look in the encyclopedia of religion, you will find out that Jehovah, the great God of the Hebrews, was always pictured in the ancient world as a bull. This is where we get the idea that it's all a bunch of bulls, it's all full of bull, because Jehovah or Yahweh was always pictured as a bull, a bull worship. Why? Because the Jews were worshiping God in the age of Taurus, the constellation of Taurus the bull. And when the age of Taurus the bull ran out and the new age that was coming in was called the age of Aries, Aries the ram. The, Moses comes down and sees the Jews worshiping Taurus the bull, and they said to Moses that we've always worshipped God the, with the golden calf. For 2,000 
you know, 150 years, over 2,000 years, we worship our God uh, by the worship of a golden calf. The golden is the sun, and the calf is the bull. The golden calf is Taurus, the, the uh, constellation of Taurus. When the sun is in the constellation of Taurus, you're worshiping the golden calf. And then when Moses comes down, he brings a new religion. Moses was in a brand new dispensation to the Jewish world. A new religion based on the next constellation of the Zodiac, which is Aries, the ram. So now the Jews have to stop worshiping the golden calf, and now they have to blow the ram's horn, the shofar. And so today the Jews blowing the ram's horn, they think that's so holy and so, you know, it's all very, very Jewish to blow the ram's horn. And they got grown men with long beards, old men who actually believe that they're doing something holy by blowing the ram's horn. It's incredible. The ram's horn comes back, we call it the shofar, goes back to the worship of Ares, the ram, the ram god. And so God is a father, and so in the ancient world, your father was Ab, A-B. And there was a, and your, and the God of the Ram, God, was your father. So the word is A-B-R-A-M, Abram. Abram becomes Abraham. Abraham had a wife called Sarah. No, the priesthood in India today is called Brahma. Brahmins, and the Brahmins would not have anything to do with the common working class people. They call them untouchable. They don't want to touch or have anything to do in India with the regular common people. Why? Because the regular common people were just dirty, working class, unclean, un, uh, unshaven, dirty, working class people. And the Brahmins were the high priests of God. They were referred to as God's holy nation, God's holy people. And they were told not to have anything to do with the working class, regular people. So that's the same way today in Judaism. The Jews are, are God's chosen people. They're not to have anything to do with the, with the Gentile people. Don't have anything to do with the Gentile people of the nations. Why? Because they're just a bunch of dogs. It's called goyim. Goyim in Hebrew means an animal, a bull or an animal or a cow. So therefore, you are nothing more than an animal. Just as in India, the people of India are nothing more than just dogs and animals too. The priest of the Brahmins, and you put an A in front of Brahmin, it becomes Abram. Abram. And therefore, in the Bible, it says Abram was Abraham's name until it was changed. Abraham. God changed Abram's name to Abraham. So therefore, Abraham and his wife, Sarah. No, the, the India religion today, the Brahmins have a, have a goddess in their religion. The Brahmins know about a goddess in their religion called Sarah Swazi. Sarah Swazi is the same as Abraham and Sarah. Abraham is a Brahmin, or a Brahmin, or Abraham, and Sarah is Sarah Swazi, the goddess, the holy goddess in, in, in the Brahmin religion. Wake up and understand that the world we call today the world of religion is actually the world of ignorance, ill-informed, unread stupidity, and that's why today all over the world, Christians and Jews and Islamic people are praying for holiness. They're praying for justice. They're praying for peace. They're praying for protection to their gods. And all the time they're praying, the bombs are dropping and the bloodshed is pouring over the earth. Why? Because they are praying to the same old pagan gods that we've always been sucked into. The people today are still worshiping the same pagan tree they've always worshipped, and they have no idea in the world what they're doing, and they don't want to hear the truth. You well, know, even, I told you. Yeah, and, and you know what the, the bottom line is here is that, you know, when, when you talk about a people that are blowing the ram's horn, that are uh, uh, praying to Ares, well, you know, I, I do remember in my study of Greek uh, orders that Ares is the god of war. So, uh, you know, 
and and meanwhile, when you take a look at the different adaptations, the different uh, interpretations of that same deity uh, throughout history, it, it's the god of war. So you're praying right. for peace to the god of war. Gee, I wonder why there's struggles. And actually, we have questions. And, and this is a thought that occurred to me many years ago, but uh, but but it's something that has been put into further context with my guest, Jordan Maxwell. We're going to take a break here, uh, but I do advise you to go to jordanmaxwellshow.com to follow up even more on this. We're going to have another hour with Jordan here on this particular Monday, and I'm going to get to these questions about modern times, which... Jordan has just uh, intuitively sort of right now here at Ocelli.com. Of course, this is a Monday episode, and uh, it being January 14th of 2019, allegedly according to that thing we call a calendar, it is an interesting time for certain. Uh, why, why would that be, Chuck? What's particularly interesting? Well, you know, you know, current events is not necessarily what we're discussing here today, or are we? Jordan Maxwell is with me. We're discussing religion. We're continuing on with that series. This is part 17. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's really fascinating to me that people's questions are dovetailing together. Uh, I'm getting groups of questions about what's going on regarding today's events. Well, not necessarily today as in Monday's events, but the events of today in general. The concept of uh, terrorism, the concept of this clash of civilizations, the idea that there is a cultural divide because of these religious precepts and all that. Well, you know what? You, you could study this a whole lot more in depth if you go to jordanmaxwellshow.com and go join the Research Society. That's at jordanmaxwellshow.com. I'll provide you guys with the link uh, with, the, with, with the podcast anyways. Uh, to make sure that you can go directly and, and join the Research Society and go to Jordan's uh, website. Not only that, but there's videos over there, which you can uh, uh, download and stream right away. Those are there for purchase for a nominal fee. Uh, you can make a donation. You can send an email to Jordan. You can join the Research Society. But all of it begins at jordanmaxwellshow.com. Jordan Maxwell Show, put it all together as one word, jordanmaxwellshow.com. That is the only website that is actually Jordan Maxwell's, uh, and except no substitutions, my friends. <laughs> anyway, Jordan is with me, and I am going to get these questions in um, as, as quickly as I can, and I, I, I have this feeling that it's going to take up the rest of the hour. But uh, do feel free to email Jordan or myself. Uh, info at Ocelli.com is just fine. Go to the chat room at Ocelli.com. Uh, sometimes I have Twitter open. I don't have it open tonight. But when I have Twitter open, I'll take Twitter questions as well. Um, but either way, I mean, get involved and, and uh, be part of the show and make it go in the direction that it needs to go. Ask the questions. And if they're relevant, I will enter them into the conversation. Make it easier Chuck, on Jordan. I have. I would say that I would, there's a point I would like to make before we get into the questions. Sure. And once we get into the questions, I know we'll just we'll have plenty of them. But as a, there's a point I'd like to make, and that is in the Bible there are two terms that are used. One is dis is a disciple, and the other is the word apostle. Mm. The word uh, uh, there's a big difference between a disciple and an apostle. A disciple is one who picks a teacher to be his master. And so he follows that particular person and what that man or woman is saying and guides their life by what, by what they're hearing from their teacher. So that they are listening to the disciple. The disciple is listening to a teacher. And so if you're a disciple, you've picked one person to be your teacher. But the word apostle in the Bible comes from a Greek word meaning one who is called out. One who is called out. As if you were, say, in the military and you're standing on the a rapt attention on the field with a hundred other soldiers and you're waiting for the general to come. And all of a sudden comes up the limo with the five-star general. And he stands, he gets out. And everyone's standing in attention. And he walks around looking at the troops and he picks you. He points at you and said, you, yeah, come here. And so he picks you out of the group and tells you, go over there and sit in the car. 
So therefore, you have been picked by the general. Therefore, the word apostle means one who was picked, one who was called out of the world. But a, but a disciple is one who picks the teacher. An apostle is the one who's picked by the teacher. The teacher picks the disciple. And so this is why it's important for you to understand that we are all, almost all people in religion are disciples. They're disciples of different religions. They're disciples of Billy Graham. They're disciples of this group or that group or this teacher or that teacher. But they're not following the great spirit. They're not following the great spirit. So what you need to understand, I have said this before on other broadcasts, I'll say it again, in order to understand apostle, it's as if you were a young man who was in the military, you joined the military or you're in the military, and the first day you are on the bus, you're going to a military base for the first day and the first time. And when you get off the bus on the military base, you tell the uh, the uh, the officer in charge, you tell him, look, at, since I'm going to be in the military, I need to go to Washington, D.C. I need to work in, with the Pentagon. And so he will then tell you, fine. And he will then have some other military guys come over and walk you off uh, and, and take you out behind the building and then knock your teeth out and give you a couple of bloody uh, black eyes. Why? Because you don't tell power where you're going. Power tells you. So that's the name of the tune in Christianity and in religion. You don't tell God anything. You don't tell anybody nothing. God calls you. So if you are a, if you are a disciple, you have decided to pick somebody to listen to. And so you are disciplining yourself according to what you're hearing from that teacher. That's why they call you a disciple. You're disciplining yourself to follow the teachings that you pick, the person you pick. But if you have in your spirit as an individual, you as an individual are spiritually very concerned about religion, about the history of religion, about the history of the world we live in, and where you came from, and your children, where they're going, and what's going to happen to the human family, if you're really concerned, then what you're doing is you're showing the spirit that you are very concerned, and that you need to realize that you are undying concern that you have for all these spiritual questions is being put into you by God. You are not picking God, God is picking you because most people couldn't care less. They don't know nothing. They don't understand nothing and they're not interested in nothing. They got their baseball games, their football games. They don't need God. They don't need to ask anything. And if they are interested, they'll pick who they're interested in. They'll be disciples. But if you're an apostle, it means God has picked you. You don't pick the teacher. The teacher picks you. So therefore, if you have this really strong feeling of wanting to know, very few people do, but if you were one of them that has this very strong, continual you know, feeling in your mind that you want to know what the real truth is and what's going to happen to you, or what's going to happen to our country and to your family, then you are being called by God, so to speak. The Spirit is calling you. You have been picked. Therefore, you are coming out of the of the lunacy that we call the human race. You have been picked. Somebody higher than you has picked you. You didn't decide that you want to know. The, the God himself has picked you and, tell, and put it into you so that you want to know. So don't think it's because you want to know you decided anything. No, the way spirituality actually works. That's why I'm saying that the whole human race cannot be saved. You're not going to be saved. You're only going to be saved from this world of darkness if somebody higher than you wants you to come out. They want you to listen. They want you to know the real truth. Then you are now continually worried about these things in your mind is because God is calling you. 
Most people are not called. Interesting side note to what you're saying too, Jordan, is that, uh, you know, quite, quite honestly and frankly, the, the, the military is a religious order and religious order is military. And That's right. people don't necessarily understand that, but, but, but let me just throw one thing into the equation here, which everybody knows, but everybody seems to forget when it comes to this. You, you swear an oath when you are inducted into the military, even if you're drafted, you swear an oath. That's right. Um, it, it, if you do not swear the oath, if you go through every other part of the process but do not swear the oath, you're not in. You're not in. Now, <laughs> this is rather curious, isn't it? So let, let, let's remember that both things are correct. And as far as disciples go, I, I, I find it uh, uh, interesting also that uh, some of the people that are, are viewed as some of the darkest individuals who are speaking evil thoughts on the planet sometimes tell us the greatest truths uh you know <laughs> you, you, you have to look at the way the word disciple has been utilized uh j just like taking a look at that the name of that fort that the wailing wall actually is take a look at the name anthony uh, no. antonio and, and antonin in fact all of these sorts of things that are rooted in that word and no i'm not going to give you the information i want you to go look at it for yourself and <clears throat> find out what that actually means. And then maybe you get a greater context as to why people are going to the wailing wall. Yep. Uh, anyway, exactly right. you know, these things are all correct. And it's interesting because military is one of those things that's discussed often. Um, and, and for those that, that say, OK, maybe I'm backtracking on what I've said before uh, regarding this. Look, I, I, I do not doubt the honest and good intent of a lot of people that choose to serve in the military. I don't at all. I, I've, I've said that many times. I feel in fact that it's a great betrayal that they are conned into doing what it is they do. Uh, but I also feel the very same way about most of these organized religions. There's a lot of people with very good intentions that wish to, you know, be church active, that go out and do things like literally do good deeds. They, they feed poor people. They give clothes to people who need them. They do things in their communities. They do that uh, because their intents are good. They do not know what they are really serving, just like the military people, because it's based on the same concept. Anyway. Precisely. So, so the, the, this, uh, I don't sound crazy to you at all, do I, Jordan? If you remember what Jesus said when he looked at the people, supposedly, in the scripture, he says, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And this is exactly correct. Forgive the people today in the churches because they know not what they do. The Bible says, uh, has God saying my people are dying from a lack of knowledge? My people are dying. He doesn't say the Buddhists are dying from a lack of knowledge. The Hindus, no. My people are dying from a lack of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, reading a book. Think for yourself. My Lord, when you find out what is really going on on this earth that you didn't know anything about, you're going to be shocked out of your system. You're going to be shocked out of your mind when you find out what's really happening to America right now and where it's going and where we as a human family on the earth, where we're heading. It's all been well planned a long time ago by a very powerful secret societies who founded this country and who are now taking over our, our government. They've taken over our systems, our institutions, our education, uh, banking, all of our institutions that we use to guide our society are now in the hands of people who want to destroy this country. They want to destroy you as an American, in America, period. Why? Because you've made a lot of enemies all over the world. Why? Because you are free and you have become wealthy and you have become powerful. And why? Because you've had the freedom and liberty and justice to do just that. But the people of the world see you becoming very powerful and very wealthy and they don't like it. And the, and the, uh, and the uh, elites, what we call the elites, do not want 
you to be free at all. The Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and all the other international banking elites all working for one thing, to promote your destruction. We are not, we don't have national leaders. We have misleaders, people who are planning your demise as they are taking your votes and smiling and waving at you. And at night while you're asleep, they are having their secret meetings about what they're going to do to rape you and steal from you and kill you and murder your children. And they're going to start wars and promoting violence all over the world and the same South American and Central American countries, which we refer to as Catholic, which are dominated by the Vatican, are also the drug runners, the people who are raising all the drugs to be sold into America to drug America. You want to drug your victims before you rape them. So we're drug, being drugged by the uh, countries in South and Central America and Mexico, which we know are dominated by the Catholic Church. Well, make no mistake, there there is no institution uh, in this hemisphere which is not corrupted. Uh, It it doesn't matter what it is. The legal system, sure. The government, absolutely. The medical system, truly. uh, All of the corporate facilities which are there to do whatever it is they say they're there to do. Notice everything has a toxic element to it that just seems to be there, you know, almost perfectly, uh, you know, lined up with all these other institutions to make sure that there is nothing which is entirely clean or helpful. Everything has a very serious price attached to it. Uh, Sure, we'll give you cheap food, but it's going to kill you. Sure, we'll give you, you know, medicine in some ways, but even if you can't afford it, it's probably going to kill you too because, Half the time, we don't really care what it does to anybody because it's there to make money. The military needs to make its money regardless of whether there is a just reason to defend ourselves or not. Uh, You know, so on and so on and so on. And this is the way it was done, not by accident, not over time, simply because people are lazy, but because this was the design. That's Um, right. It was designed to do that. It was designed to be who we are today. Absolutely. And what's interesting here is, is again, the, the, these questions, and I'm going to tie them all together. Uh, Art and a couple of other individuals have asked about basically uh, the scriptures and modern times. Now, there's a lot of people out there, especially these. And, and why did I just chuckle, chortle at the uh, the thought for a moment? Because I just ran a very quick little slideshow in my head of various televangelists. Uh, really quickly there, and then I, I just, you know, I, I, I smirk and I, I chuckle at them because uh, they're, they're ridiculous human beings, the majority of them. Oh, God, um, yes. So, so I was thinking to myself of people like, you know, uh, Hagee and, oh, you know, guys from the past like Swaggart, who I used to find rather entertaining, uh, but, you know, Jim Baker, I mean, even Billy Graham, all of these guys. These major league preachers, right? They always tell you about how, and, and the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll knock on your door if they can find you and they're not afraid of you. They don't come to my door anymore, Jordan. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they, they learn. Um, but the, the thing is, there, there are people at all times coming to you and telling you that this is the end of days. It has been uh, foretold in the scriptures. They often point to the book of Revelations They talk about all of these different areas in the Bible that are about death and destruction and the coming apocalypse, uh, you know, so on and so on and so on, which, by the way, not a story which originated in the Bible, (laughs) just so you know. Um, but, But here's the thing. Do we see something in the scriptures? Because these were not written just as a fanciful story. Do, Do we see something in the scriptures that appears to be a really good descriptor? For what we see related to the church, the corrupt power struggles, the uh, the giant nation, uh, which is the United States. I mean, we are the empire of the world because we are in almost every country with our military presence in one way or another, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, what, do, do you know of references that you could give to people where it is described in scriptures um, this particular time period? And, well, you know, the time leading up to it and all of that. Like I said, most people will tell you about revelations or, you know, if you're Hagee, you got your Israeli and American flag together and you think you're doing a great patriotic service. But 
<clears throat> anyway, let's put those guys aside. Um, is there something that you would point people to that describes what we're watching unfold on the planet today? Yes, yes. Something very important. Yes. If you go on my website, jordanmaxwellshow.com, you will see an advertisement, a little banner, saying that you can join my Research Society website. Join my research website, and you will find all kinds of documents, incredible pictures showing you all of the profound lies and deception and things that you've been told that were not true. I've been doing this for almost almost 60 years now. I've been trying to wake the people of this world up to what's actually going on, and I've, I've paid a terrible price for it. I'm now close to 80 years old, broke with nothing. I'm trying desperately to do what I do before I leave this world because I believe that it was given to me to try and wake up the people around the world to what's actually, in fact, happening to the human family, where we've come from, where we are now, and where we're going. And if you go on my on my research website and you join it, there is a there are two places that I think you need to go to first. One is one of the divisions of my research society. You will find I have divided all of the different subjects into different folders, and you check the folder you are interested in and click on it, and it will open up a world of research to you on that subject. And so if you join my research society, first of all, go to the audio video folder. And when you open it up, the very first lecture you will hear is a two and a half hour lecture that was done back in 1966. 1966, almost what? I don't even know how long ago that would be, over 50 years ago. In 1966, there was a man who recorded a two and a half hour lecture. It was actually over eight hours, but it was boiled down to a two and a half hour lecture on what is going on on the earth with America and where we came from, where are we now, and where are we going? It was the most devastating thing I have ever heard. It changed my life. I was absolutely struck by this lecture. It was the most extraordinary uh, unfolding of knowledge and wisdom I have never heard before about who we are, what's going on with this country, and where is it going. It changed my life instantly. It just shocked me. And it started me because I was already talking about secret societies and giving lectures as far back as 1960 and 61 on the ancient cults and the ancient religions of the world. But and I knew that the world I lived in was corrupt through and through, but I had never heard this particular lecture. And so if you go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, and you will see an advertisement for my my research website, join it, and go to the audio video, which is the very first one, I think. Uh, and, and when you open it up, the first one will be a uh, lecture, two and a half hours. You need to, it's on the web. And so I, I finally got it put on the web. And now you can go and listen to what I heard some 50 years ago, over 50 years ago, <clears throat> well over 50. Almost 60 years ago, 1966, and it's an incredible story about how the world you live in actually works, and it will blow your mind, I guarantee you, if you are intellectually honest, and if you're educated enough to handle the real truth, which most people aren't, they will hear it and don't know what they're, they don't have the faintest idea what they're hearing. And it just sounds sounds crazy. But if you're intellectually honest and educated, listen to that uh, uh, that that audio lecture on my website, on my research website, and it will absolutely blow you away. This man, as far back as 1966, many years ago, 
already knew where we were going and what was going to happen, and it's exactly what's happening today. And he tells you who's doing it and how they're doing it and why and who's financing it and where it's going. And it's an extraordinary education right there on my research website. And then right. while you're on my research website, you might want to go to another folder. It says it's called uh, important, uh, what do they call it? Important lectures or uh, interesting article. That's the name of it. Interesting articles. Right. And you know, interesting articles. I have two or three major articles right up at the front, which will absolutely blow you away. Things you have never heard before that were documented from the Washington D.C. documented, uh, uh, you know, uh, documents that will extraordinarily, uh, you know, just blow you away that you've never heard before. I have taken the last 60 years of my life looking for all of the dark secrets of government, religion, finance, banking, and where this world has come from and what is it doing now. And it's all there on my research website. If you really want to know the truth, if you really want to hear the real stuff, there's something I'm telling you that is so extraordinary. You need to go on my website and join my uh, my research website and listen to the first audio on the audio video folder. There are also, I want to say, two videos I have uh, that are being streamed on my website. If you go to Jordan Maxwell's show, you will see on the right-hand side of the home page two videos that are being streamed, they are separate from my research society. You don't get those on the research society. They are separate, and uh, they, uh, you can watch them. But on the research society, there is an audio-video place, and you listen to the first audio, listen to maybe all of them. All of these different audios on my audio-video page are extraordinary stuff. Right, there, there is an, all. An, an amazing array of stuff there, and, and also the other folders, by the way, uh, under the the because I'm looking at them right now because I'm in there, by the way, guys. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I I actually am part of the Jordan Maxwell Research Society, and you guys might really want to consider that if you haven't done it already, because the other folders here are called. Let's see, bits of history. Did you know? Uh, God's holy word. Have you ever have you ever wondered? <laughs> now th these sound like fanciful sort of titles. Um, they're not. When you go in, it's some really interesting stuff. Even the graphic on the page describing something very interesting about your computer is uh, is fascinating, honestly. But uh, you got highly recommended materials. Um, let's see. Well, you got artwork from you as well, but also there's uh, pictures with a message, uh, quotes of importance, um, you know, and, and there's uh, different things about religion, different things about history, different things about government. Uh, some of it is, you know, like you say, you got the audio video section, but there's a lot of uh, visual elements here where you've got images, you've got articles, you've got references. Um, matter of fact, I think there's even a couple of just whole books in here. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, I put some of my books in there for free. Yeah, uh, they're, they're here for free. So, I mean, automatically you've got some books, <laughs> you've got this audio video section. And like you said, there, there's this other section with the, with the uh, two videos that are streaming right now. And you're going to add more as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. We will add as much as we can. I'm going to be adding, but just understand that the, that the two videos you see on my home page are separate from the research society. Right. The research society is crammed filled with all kinds of research material. And I only have one webmaster and he only has eight hours a day. And there's only so much you can do in a day's time. And so he's got huge amounts of material to put on my website. Uh, on that research website for me. I don't do any of it. I have a webmaster. I have to pay him to do it. But he's putting on all my all of my research stuff over the years. He's trying to put it on little bit by little, little by little. It's all coming on, and one day soon it's going to be monstrous. It's already huge. It's going to be monstrous soon. 
and it's got really interesting stuff, especially if you're religious, go on the religious uh, symbolism. Uh, well, I don't remember what the name of that, that, that folder was, but it's in there. It's on religion. And it's all the stories you've been told about the Bible and been told about religion, where they really came from and the pictures, where it really, what the real story is and where it, where it really came from. Well, there's two, two sections that actually touch on that, which is uh, uh, hidden stuff in religion, first of all, uh, shows you part that's of that. It. In, uh, yeah, that's it. Hidden stuff in religion. And there's also pictures with a message. Yeah. Which, again, uh, I think both folders actually touch on that, where you get different things about hidden symbolism. And like I said, just the beginning of the page, uh, yep. there's a little graphic there that explains something about your computer. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's uh, it's rather fascinating. Um, yep, it sure is. So anyway, like I said, there there, there is just in, uh, immense information here. And yeah, the last folder, by the way, I, I said, oh, I know there's a couple of books in here. The last folder is free ebooks. Uh, there's a ton of them there. <laughs> so anyway, yep. it, it it is what it is. I'm just saying that uh, this is one of the things that I'm look I'm looking at the page right now because I'm a member. Uh, and, uh, so there you go, guys. Um, I definitely would, uh, would suggest it, but anyway, he, but that lecture at the very top there from over 52 years ago now is, uh, is, says it better than you'd be able to capsulize it here as far as what's going on and where to look exactly in the scriptures and stuff. Huh? It is the most incredible lecture I have ever heard. And even today, after hearing it for over 50 years, I still say, when I listen to it today, it's mind-boggling. It's the most incredible expose on how this world really works. What's really actually, in fact, going on, if you can handle it. If you can't handle the truth, a lot of people, you know, I've said it before, a lot of children are frightened of the dark. But what's really pathetic is when adults are frightened of the light. People don't want to hear the truth, but if you really want to know what's going on, go to that first that first uh, folder with audio video and listen to the first two and a half hour lecture. And if that doesn't set you back about ten years growth, nothing's going to. If you're intellectually honest and bright and bright enough to understand what's being said, it's going to scare you to death. It's the most incredible expose of the world we live in today and who we are today and why and where it's going this man who did this was an extraordinary mind he's no longer with us of course but what a mind he had he knew what was actually going on and he told us for the first time you will find out what the world is really all about you need to go and listen to it right now i'm taking a look at that by the way and uh it says 1967 actually it, yeah I, I i got it in 67 but it was actually recorded in 66 uh okay okay no i was just trying to figure that out if, if maybe we're you know maybe they need to go to another one but you are you are talking about the uh the uh a speech the from, the from yeah from mr fagan yeah uh, mm-hmm. okay no just checking uh because i'm i'm looking like i said i'm looking at these things as you're speaking about them and uh if you the listener we're also a member of the Research Society. You know exactly what we're talking about. Um, yep. it, is, uh, it is amazing. And, and then there's uh, also a series there done by another doctor from, from back in 1959 and 60 who did about six one-hour lectures, an hour, at least one hour, maybe they're 90 minutes apiece. There's about six or seven 90-minute lectures done by a professor from uh, Wayne State University explaining the world you live in. It's the most extraordinary stuff you're ever going to hear. He explains how the world was built and how we are today operating around the world. And for the first time, you will see for the first time what's actually going on on the earth. And I knew about this back in 1960. And I kept it. And I put it on my research website because I think it's extraordinary stuff that people need to know about. And when they ask you, well, what's going on? Well, go listen to those two sets of of, of lectures and you'll find out what's going on. 
It's all on my research society. And I want to thank you for giving me a time to plug it because I'm putting all of my research onto that website because I know I'm not going to be here much longer. And I know that the world is dying in the darkness that they're in. And I want to enlighten my fellow man, the people who want to know. If you really want to know, and if the spirit is guiding you and calling you, that you should know about what's happening to the world you live in, what's going to happen to you, you need to go back and listen to these two series of lectures. Really quickly, I just wanted to let you know that somebody in the chat room says that they're joining the Research Society now because they want to go and hear that lecture. Uh, I've also got another individual who's asking a interesting question that I think we might have covered before, but uh, just really quickly, I want to throw it at you because, as I said, anything that's relevant, I will put it into play. Um, Here here we go. Uh, Did Jordan consult the folks that made Zeitgeist or did they exploit his work? Question. They exploited my work. But on another major radio show many years ago, you would know if I told you the name of the show. As a major radio show, the producer, his name was uh, uh, Peter, Peter something. Uh, I can't remember the producer of Zeitgeist. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name. He was a guest on this radio show. And the host of the show asked him, where did you come by this knowledge? Where did you get it from? And he said, it's all based on the work of Jordan Maxwell. I have just been listening to Jordan for many years. I decided that since he hasn't put it into a video, I will. And he says, so it's all based on him. And I can send you that that clip if you want to hear it yourself. I'll just send you the clip. And you can hear the Peter Joseph was the guy's name. Peter Joseph was the producer of right. Zeitgeist. And he said, I did Zeitgeist. It's all, period, based on Jordan Maxwell's work. He was the one that incited me to do this. After hearing him uh, for so many years, I've decided since he hasn't done anything with this work on a video, I will. I took all of his work and put it into a video called Zeitgeist. So I was, in fact, the the uh, the you know the the reason for the video being made to start with, according to the producer. There are other people who tried to con- copy me that are on there, and uh, well, in fact, they, a, they even use clips of you in the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it was really an extraordinary event. I didn't know anything about this movie. I didn't know anything about Zeitgeist. He just used my voice from different radio shows that I have done. He, the Peter Joseph, the producer, used my voice and my talking about different subjects and then created Zeitgeist, which was heard by, I don't know, over 100 million people around the world. And it also, incidentally, whether you know it or not, Zeitgeist, the movie, also gave birth to a political party called the Zeitgeist Party around the world. I think it was 37 different countries. There is a Zeitgeist political movement in universities and colleges and schools. It's called the Zeitgeist Movement, based on Jordan Maxwell's work. Well, and, and also what uh, piggybacked onto that is the Venus Project, That's which, right. you know, which, which again is, is a interesting work when you talk about uh, uh, Jacques Fresco and his concepts. But that is in the later incarnations of Zeitgeist. All of the bedrock material is really you. Uh, but then they, they sort of offer Fresco as a uh, as a solution to a lot of the things that are illing the planet, you know. Yeah, which, and I didn't have anything to do with Zeitgeist 2 or 3 or anything else, but I but I was the light on the Zeitgeist movie, the first one. The producer said I did it all based on Jordan Maxwell, period. Yeah, but, but still throughout those other movies, <laughs> quite honestly, um, until you get to the fourth one, uh, you, you, you're still present in, in the material. I mean, it's just... I didn't even know that because yeah. I didn't even know about Zeitgeist, much less what else is on. Yeah, I'm, I'm just well. You know what it is. I I I became rather enamored with this stuff uh, when when it was handed out because there was this encouragement to hand out those DVDs for free years ago. 
um, which, which someone handed me one. I created some copies. I handed them along. And this is, you know, before YouTube was a big enough thing, uh, people were doing yep. this. Yep. And, yep. uh, you know, quite, quite honestly, uh, I, I got to see you before I knew who you were. Uh, you yeah, know, well, a lot of people did. Yeah, a lot of people saw, uh, zeitgeist, which the word zeitgeist is a German word, which means the, uh, the spirit of the time. Right. Zeitgeist means the spirit of the times in which you're living. Well, my God, if you want to talk about the spirit of the times in which we're living, you're talking about chaos, lies, deception misunderstandings, purposeful uh, darkness to keep the people in the dark about what's going on, the real lies and the destruction of the human family. That is the spirit of the times in which we're living. And I've, I've wanted to be able to start myself. I'd like to, my, my, what I really would really like to be able to do, which I know I could do if I had help, I would like to reform religion. I would like to start a new understanding of the ancient world of religion, where the religions of this world have come from, and get back to the original. Go back to the old, ancient, original religion, which was called the sacred science. The sacred science or astral theology. I'd like to reform religion. Open up the world to the real truth of where Judaism has come from, where Islam has come from, and where Christianity is based on. Go back to the old way. And that's another interesting point. Uh, Christianity was referred to in the Roman Empire. Christians themselves were referred to. They don't know this. But in the Roman Empire, Christians were referred to as atheists. Christians were the first atheists in the Roman Empire. Why? Because they would not worship the Roman gods. And so the Romans said, if you won't worship our gods, you must be crazy. Because they are the only gods in the whole universe as a Roman god. And if you don't worship the Roman gods, then you are obviously an atheist. You're crazy. Because you don't worship our gods. Well, today is the same thing. Today... People have all kinds of words and names for people like me who are not accepting the world that we live in and not accepting the religious situation that we've been given because religions around the world are corporations. They're business. This is why all the churches are in denominations, denominations like 10s and 20s and 50s. Churches are divided into denominations because they are a business. They are corporations. It's an, extra, it's an extraordinary fact of the world you live in. I've been doing this kind of research all my life. And what I finally end up with today, after doing this for some 60 years, is broke with nothing, only nothing, and I've paid a terrible price because I've lost my family, I've lost my friends, I've lost almost everything I ever did, I almost ever had, because it's a very dark road when you go into the darkness of the human race, where we really come from, what the real truth is, and this is what I have always wanted to do, is try and bring light into a very dark world that I live. So that's what I try and do. I try and help people to wake up to the real facts of history. It's an extraordinary world we live in. It's a very dark place. You know what's funny, like Jordan? I just forwarded you a, an email, which uh, you might want to look at later, but you sort of intuitively answered one of the questions that came in while you were speaking. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to, to let you see that in real time. Uh, it, uh, it, it came from uh, somebody who identifies themselves as Russell in Mississippi. Now, I, I you know, I don't know. But it's really fascinating. Take a look at the timestamp on that. You literally transitioned um, exactly from one topic to the next and sort of answered the tail end of his email there. There's some praise in there and a few other things uh, about the presentation. And he was hoping to get in for the live show. Well, you did, Russell, uh, just to let you know. But uh, it, it's really fascinating because what can we do about this? Can we get back to 
the legitimate relationship between, I hate to use this word, but the divine and yeah. ourselves. Can we actually accomplish that? Is that something? See, again, now, now you've got to have that debate like we talked about at the top of the show, Jordan, where something, can it be done? And will it be done? These are two different questions, right? Can, yeah. can we solve all of these painful things that are destroying, murdering, absolutely causing, you know, the deaths of thousands of children and other people that are seemingly completely innocent on the planet on a daily basis that are being devastated by the systematic, uh, devast, you know, the, but the systematic decimation of, uh, of, of the human family? Could, could, could we stop it all tomorrow? Yes. Will we? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think that we have the ability. We as humans do not have the wherewithal to change the world because we don't have the power to change. Why do we not have the power to change anything? We don't have the power to change anything. Why? Because knowledge is power. Without knowledge, you cannot change anything. You, you may have a, 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 a Rolls Royce. And if it's not running, you need to get someone who understands Rolls Royces, who actually knows what's going on to fix it. And so you can't go to the same people who have caused the trouble we are in today and ask them to help us get out of the trouble. They are the enemies of the human family. They are the religionists. They open up the churches and the religions, and they all are in bed with the with the government, they all are being fed by the Federal Reserve and the banking institutions. And when you see how the whole world works, which, like I said, if you go on the web, go to my website and just listen to the lectures, you will hear how this whole world has been put together a long time ago by the Knights Templars, by the religious orders, by what we call today the CIA in America is actually a Masonic Catholic Vatican order and operating in America today. So CIA, I say, should not be Central Intelligence Agency. It should be the Catholic Intelligence Agency. Why? Because the CIA was founded by a group called the Knights of Malta. Knights of Malta, which was an incredibly powerful secret society operating in Europe under the Vatican, under the Pope. And they were they are still today very powerful today and some of the most important criminals and Nazi officers in the SS, the Gestapo and the Adolf Hitler were members of the Knights of Malta. And they came over here after the Second World War and they they set up something that they call these Nazis and criminals under the Vatican. They came over to America. We allowed them in. And they came over and they set up something called the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, as a Knights of Malta Masonic order that's running our country from behind the scenes for the Vatican. Wake up and get a light. The Vatican is the CIA in America today. CIA it's works so for a lot of things, though, Jordan. You know, it's yep. a cocaine importation agency as well. <laughs> okay. That's right. Uh, you know, it, it just it works across the board. There's lots of different uses for those three letters. But, you know, believe it or not, we're running very low on time. And uh, I want to take this moment again to uh, to remind people that there is only one website that is Jordan Maxwell's. There's only one place that you can get directly the research information, that would be the Research Society, which you can find at Jordan Maxwell's website. And there's only one place you can get videos straight from the man himself. That is all at jordanmaxwellshow.com, okay? And you got you got to put it all together. It has to be all one word, jordanmaxwellshow.com. If you go there, you will find that there's a public area, sure, and absolutely. Feel free to email Jordan. Jordan loves to hear your thoughts, especially about presentations like this, uh, your questions, not just for the purposes of this show, but more than happy to answer them on this show. Uh, I'm sure that Jordan would be more than happy to just respond 